Hi, today we're going to be learning about cubes and cube roots. We're going to start off by looking at cubes. When you are working with numbers that are cubed, then similar to when we have numbers that are squared, we're multiplying a number by itself. It's the same sort of thing with cubes, except with cubes, you are multiplying a number by itself again, an extra time. So for example, you can have four times four times four, where if you were to make that into a visual representation, so four squared or four times four was, it, we could create a square like this, That was a four by four square. Now, if we multiply that by four again, what we end up with is a cube like this. And that is why we call it cubed because it makes a cube where we have a four by four by four cube. Okay, so when we are working with cubes, this is it, what we're talking about. It's numbers that if we multiply them by themselves three times, so we have in this case four times four times four, we're multiplying three fours together, or two times two times two, or five times five times five, or whatever it is, that we're multiplying three of them together, then it can form a cube like this, where a cube is a shape that has uh, it's a 3D shape that has squares on all sides. Okay, so this can be written as four, like cubed like that. We say four cubed. This three over here is our exponent. And we say, we could also say that it's four to the power of three. So over here we've got four cubed. And if you were to calculate how many little blocks there are, so how many of these little blocks there are, so this, like that, how many little, tiny little cubes they are, if you were to count all of them, you would end up with 64. So four cubed is equal to 64. Okay, so when you are cubing, you, you get four times four times four, and that gives you 64. When you're cubing, say for example, two cubed, it's two times two times two, and that gives you eight. Okay, so when we are cubing something, we are multiplying the same thing together three times. And our exponent, which is this little number over here, tells me how many of the base, which is the big number over here, are being multiplied together. So in this case, there are three twos being multiplied together. Okay, and this is what we call a perfect cube. 64 is a perfect cube, 8 is a perfect cube. Any number that we get, which is a result of cubing a number like this, is a perfect cube. Okay. It's something that can be represented in the form of a cube like this. Okay, so what you're going to do first is you are going to now complete these tables over here where you are going to work out what the cubes are of each of these numbers. Okay, and you can see in this table I've got one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed. We've already done this one over here. This was 64. And I just want to show you over here if you've got negative 4 cubed, then what you're going to end up with is negative 4 multiplied by negative 4 multiplied by negative 4 again. Now remember we said when you're multiplying a negative and there are three or an odd number of negatives that we're multiplying together, we end up with a negative answer. So that's going to be negative 64. So when we are cubing negative numbers, because all of for each of them, we are multiplying that negative three times, we're going to end up with a negative answer. Okay, so once you've worked this table out, this one should be nice and easy to do for you. Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this. Now.
Okay, you should be done with that by now. So let's go through each of those. So for one cubed, it's just one because one times one times one will always just be one. Then we've got two cubed is eight. Three cubed is 27. We already did four cubed, which is 64. Five cubed is 125. Six cubed is 216. Seven cubed is 343. Eight cubed is 512. 9 cubed is 729, 10 cubed is 1000, 11 cubed is 1000, and 331, 12 cubed is 1728, 13 cubed is 2,197. 15 cubed is 3,375. 20 cubed is 8,000. And 25 cubed is 15,625. Okay, now once you've done the first table, like I said, the second table is actually very easy because all of these numbers, the absolute values are exactly the same as what they were here. So when I multiply the absolute values by each other or together three times, I'm going to end up with the same numbers. But remember, when you've got a negative that's been cubed, you're going to end up with a negative answer because you have three negatives that have been multiplied together. It's an odd number, gives you a negative answer. So all of these numbers are going to be identical, except that we're going to have a negative in front of each of them. So I have negative one, then I have negative eight, and negative 27, then negative 64, negative 125, negative 216, negative 343, neg negative 512, negative 729, negative 1000, negative 1331, negative 1728, negative 2,197, negative 3,375, negative 8,000, and finally negative 15,625. So that's what you should have got for all of those values in those tables. Remember, when you are cubing a number, then you are multiplying that number three times together, and when it is negative, then your cubed number is going to be negative as well, because when we cube a negative, we're multiplying that negative three times. So there are three negatives being multiplied together all, toge um, all together, which is an odd number of negatives, and that gives you a negative answer. So all of these where we were cubing a negative number gave us a negative answer. All the ones where we were cubing a positive answer obviously gave us a positive answer. Well, we were cubing a positive number obviously gave us a po positive answer. Okay, now we're going to go on to an example where we are going to be cubing a decimal fraction. Okay, so in this example I've got negative 0 0.3 cubed. Okay, now when we were learning about decimal fractions and cubing, or in, it was squaring at the time when we were working with decimal fractions in the last lesson, then we said that when we are multiplying decimal fractions together, what we do is we look and see how many decimal places there are all together, and then we use that to then work out how many decimal places our final answer should have, or our product should have. So in this case, what this actually means is negative 0 0.3 multiplied by negative 0 0.3 multiplied by negative 0 0.3. So what I'm going to do is I need to count, count and see how many decimal places there are all together that are being multiplied together initially. So I've got over here 1, and here 1, and here 1. So if I add those together, that's 3. So that means that my answer should have 3 decimal places. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 3 times 3 times 3. Now, we just did our table and we found that when we cubed 3, we got 27. So if you know those cubes, those perfect cubes, then that'll help you with this. So uh, just like I said with the squares, it is useful to know your 
your cube numbers as well the basic cube numbers you don't need to know all of your cube numbers and you can always use your calculator if you need to but it does help if you do know at least the the basic ones that you get used the most often so like two cubed three cubed four cubed and five cubed and so on okay so in this case three cubed is 27 so now I need to have three decimal places altogether so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is going to be first of all a negative times a negative times a negative is negative remember we said if you are cubing a negative it's going to give us a negative answer okay so I know it's going to be negative and then three times three times three is 27 but now I need to have three decimal places and this is only three uh, this is only two digits so I need to have an extra digit as a decimal place so I'm going to fill in that extra place with a zero and then put in my comma and the zero in front of it so this one over here I could have gone instead of writing all of that out I could have gone straight to the answer over here by saying if I'm cubing a negative it's going to be negative then I count my decimal places in this case there is one decimal place and because I'm cubing it, that means I'm going to have three things that I'm multiplying together which are identical, which means that there are going to be three decimal places being multiplied together altogether. So I'm going to have three in my answer, which means if I cube the three and I get 27, that's only two, so I need to have an extra one. So I've got 27. I put in my extra decimal place so that I now have three decimal places because that's how many I need. And then I put in my comma and my zero in front of that. So now I have cubed negative 0 0.3. Okay, so now you're going to do the same thing with three examples yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this. Okay, you should be done with that, so let's go through that those examples. So for question A, we had 0 0.02 cubed. So first of all, we need to see how many decimal places are there initially. So in 0 0.02, there are two decimal places. Now I'm multiplying this by itself, and there are three of them that are multiplying together. So if there are three identical things being multiplied together, then each of them will also have two decimal places. So that means I'm going to have altogether six decimal places. So my answer needs to have six decimal places. Okay? So now I know that I'm going to have a decimal answer and it's going to have six decimal places. I need to cube my two. Two cubed is eight. Now eight is obviously only one digit. So it can only be one decimal place. Now I need to have 
seven, or I need to have six decimal places all together, which means I need to have an extra five. So I'm going to add in zeros to fill in those extra decimal places. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I've got my six decimal places, then I put in my comma and my extra zero in front. So that is what you should have got for this one. It's positive because we started with a positive number, so I didn't have to worry about the sign. I cube the two and I make sure that I have, in this case, six decimal places because I started with two decimal places. Question B, we had negative 0 0.1 cubed. So now on this one I've got a negative that I'm cubing so my answer is going to be negative because when I cube a negative number I get a negative answer because that's an odd number of negatives. So it's a negative answer. Then I've got over here one decimal place so my answer needs to have three decimal places because I'm multiplying that together three times and so I'm going to have three decimal places all together. So my answer must have three and when I cube 1, any time I, I multiply 1 by itself at all, it's going to give me an answer of 1. So this is going to be 1, uh, one cubed will also be 1. It'll stay 1. But now I have to worry about my decimal places, so I need to have three decimal places, we said. So 1 is only one digit, so I need to have an extra 2. So I'm going to write that 1, and then put in two extra zeros to make up my three digits or my three decimal places. Then I have my comma and my zero. So that's what you should have got for question B. Question C, we have one comma one cubed. Okay, so now for this one, what we're gonna do is ignore that for now and look at it as a number on its own and altogether that looks like an 11. So we are going to be working with 11 cubed. Okay, so first of all, I have got, in this case, no negative, so my answer is going to be positive, so I don't have to worry about my sign. I can now go on to actually working out how many decimal places I need to have. So if I look at what I'm starting with, I am starting with one decimal place. If I'm cubing it, then I'm going to end up with three times that, which is three decimal places. So now I know that my answer is going to have to have three decimal places in it. Okay, then if I work out what 11 cubed is, that should give you 1,331. Now, 1,331 is already more than the three decimal places I need. So I need to make sure that I put the comma in the right place so that I only have three decimal places. So I need to have one, two, three decimal places, so my comma is going to go over here between the one and the three, the first one and the first three. So that is what you should have got for question C. Okay, now we're going to go on to an example where we are working with a common fraction. Okay, so, so when you're working with a common fraction, in this case, we are working with 5 over 3 that we are cubing. And just like when we're doing squaring, we have to do that to the numerator and the denominator. So in this case, I've got 5 over 3 that I'm cubing. And I have to cube the numerator, which is the top of the fraction, and the denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction, separately. So I cube the 5, and that gives me 125. Over, if I cube the 3, I get 27. So when you are working with a common fraction, where you've got a numerator and a denominator, you apply the exponent to the numerator and the denominator separately. Just like we did when we were squaring, we do the same thing when we are cubing. Be careful if you've got a mixed number, so in this case, if there was like a 1 or something in front of it, remember we have to combine it into the fraction first. We can't keep them separate, we have to put it into get together into one fraction, creating an improper fraction, and then we do the numerator and the denominator separately. Okay, so I'm going to give you three to do on your own now, then I'm going to give you two minutes to work on.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with those by now, so let's go through each of those examples. So for question A, we had negative 2 over 7 cubed. So first of all, we have to identify what our sign is going to be. Because it's negative and we're cubing it, that means that there are three negatives being multiplied all together. So it is going to be a negative answer because there are an odd number of negatives. Then I do my numerator, which is the 2. So 2 cubed is 8. And then my denominator, which is 7. If I cube 7, I get 343. So when you cube 2 7 you get 8 over 343. And because it was negative to start with, my answer is going to be negative as well. Then question B, we had 4 over 11. And now this one, because it started off positive, it's going to stay positive. So don't worry about my sign. If I cube my numerator, which is 4, that gives me 64. Over, if I cube 11, I get 1,331. Okay, and then the last one, question C. We had negative 1 and 1 over 9 cubed. Now, the first thing we have to do is... I have to sort out that mixed number. I can't work with a mixed number, so I have to first change it to an improper fraction. So I multiply 1 by 9, that gives me 9, and I add the numerator, which is 1, and that gives me 10. So I get 10 over 9 cubed. So negative 10 over 9 cubed. Now because it started off negative and I'm cubing it, it's going to give me a negative answer. And then when I cube 10, I get 1,000 over 9 cubed, which is 729. So that's what you should have got for question C. Okay, now we are going to go on to a few examples that we're going to be comparing with each other. Okay, so here I have got 2 plus 3 cubed, and I've got 2 cubed plus 3 cubed, and we're going to be comparing those. And then we're also going to take 2 multiplied by 3 cubed, and we're going to compare that to 2 cubed times 3 cubed. Okay, this is very similar to what we did when we were working with squares. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at our addition ones. So if I've got 2 plus 3 in brackets and I cube it, and if I add the, that 2 plus 3 together and I get 5 cubed, then when I cube it, I will end up with 125. Okay. But now if I take the 2 and the 3 and I cube them separately and then I add them, let's see what we get. So 2 cubed is 8 plus 3 cubed, which is 27. And if I add 8 and 27, that gives me 35. So you can see straight away that those are obviously not the same as each other. So now I can say, therefore, 2 plus 3 cubed is not the same as 2 cubed plus 3 cubed. It's not equal, which means that if I've got brackets with things being added inside them or subtracted, and that bracket is being cubed, I cannot apply the cube to the things inside the bracket separately because it's not going to give me the right answer. Okay, now let's have a look at what, ha at what, happen at what happens when we are multiplying instead of adding. Okay, so here I've got 2 and 3 again, but this time I'm, at, I'm multiplying them together. So that gives me 6 cubed. Now, 6 cubed is the same as 216. Okay. And here, if I work it out separately, if I say 2 cubed is 8, multiplied by 3 cubed, which is 27, if we take our calculator and we multiply that together, then I get 8 times 27, and that also gives me 216. Okay, so when you are working with multiplication, like in this case, you can apply the cube to the things that are being multiplied together separately, and you will still get the same answer. So I can say, therefore, 2 times 3 cubed is the same as 2 cubed times 3 cubed. And that's why when we're doing our fractions over here, the same thing. We could apply the cube to the uh, denominator and the numerator separately, 
because multiplication and division basically work the same, right? Okay, so it's the same thing. If I am adding or subtracting, I can't apply my exponent, which is in this case the cube, to the things that I'm adding or subtracting separately. But if I am multiplying or dividing, I can. Okay, right. So now using that understanding that if you are working with addition or subtraction inside brackets, you have to work it out first. You need to go and do these three examples. I'm going to give you again, uh, in this case, I'm going to give you uh, three minutes to work on this. to simplify those examples. Okay, you should be done with those, so let's go through those examples. So the first one was 9 minus 4 cubed. So the first thing we have to do whenever we have additional subtraction inside the brackets where we are cubing what is inside those brackets, we have to first simplify what is inside the brackets. So 9 minus 4, that gives me 5. So this is actually the same as 5 cubed, which gives me 125. Okay, so we had to simplify that first. Then I have got, for question B, 4 plus 7 cubed. Again, I have to simplify the 4 plus 7. That gives me 11 cubed, which simplifies to 1,331. And then the final one, I have 3 minus 6. That gives me negative 3 cubed. Now, you see over here, with these ones, I didn't have to write those in brackets because they just worked out to positive answers. But here, I have to write it in brackets. Because if I don't, it's going to look like I'm not cubing the negative, but I must cube the negative because the negative was the result of getting of working out three minus six, and the three minus six is what was in well, is what was in the brackets. So I have to write that in brackets because you'll learn uh, in a few lessons time that if you have a negative outside the brackets, 
or if you have no brackets, then this cube actually doesn't apply to that negative. So you have to make sure that you write it inside the brackets. Okay, so over here I've got negative 3 cubed, and when I cube that, because it's I'm cubing, so I'm multiplying three negatives together, that gives me a negative answer. And when I cube 3, I get 27. So that's negative 27 for question C. Okay, now that we know what cubes are, we're going to go on to cube roots. Okay, so for cube roots, just like with square roots, when we are working out cube roots, they are basically the number that was originally cubed to get to the cube that we have. So if I ask you what the cube root of, for example, 64 is, it's written like this. Just like with a square root where we have this symbol over here, okay, this is like our root sign, okay, when you have a cube root, you put a little 3 over there to show that we're talking about the cube root. For the square root, we don't worry about putting a little number there. If there's no number, it automatically means that it, there's an invisible 2, okay, but if it's a cube root, we write the 3 there because we need to specify that it's not a square root. Okay, so if there's a little 3 there, it means it's the cube root. So we are looking for the number that was cubed to get what was inside this sign over here, which is the number in this case is 64. So I want to know what number could I have cubed to get 64. And in this case, that number is 4. Okay, so if I cube 4, it's 4 times 4 times 4, that gives me 64. So if I say, what did I cube to get 64? In other words, what was the cube root of 64? It was 4. Okay, so now what you're going to do is, just so you know, on your calculator, if you're using your calculator to work out a cube root, you've got this symbol over here. Okay, it might look different on your calculator, uh, but it's it looks like the cube root that I've got over there. Okay, so I've got a cube root. So I'm going to use that cube root sign, and then I can put in, in this case, it was 64 equals, and that gives me 4. Okay, so you can use a calculator when you're working out a cube root, but um, there are ones that it is useful to know. But if you know the cube numbers that we were talking about earlier, those basic cube numbers, then you will automatically know what the cube roots of those numbers are as well. Okay, so but for now, you're going to go and fill in these tables over here where you're going to be working out the cube roots of a, uh, a variety of numbers. And again, these are ones that it is helpful to know. So I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this.
Okay, you should be done with those, so let's go through all of those. So you should have found the cube root of 1 is just 1, cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 27 is 3, of 64 is 4, of 125 is 5, the cube root of 216 is 6, the cube root of 343 is 7, the cube root of 512 is 8, the cube root of 729 is 9, the cube root of 1000 is 10, the cube root of 1331 is 11, of 1728 is 12, of, 1, of 2197 is 13, of 3375 is 15, of 8000 is 20, and the cube root of 15625 is 25. Okay, now with the second table over here, when you are cube rooting a negative number, the only way that you could have got a negative number is if you started with a negative number when you cubed it in the first place. So all of these, you'll see that my absolute values are the same as what I had over here, but they're all negative now. So I am going to have the same cube roots as I had over there, except that they're all going to be negative. Okay, so it's going to be negative 1 and negative 2 negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, negative 14 or 15, negative 20 and finally negative 25. Okay, so that's what you should have got for all of the cube roots in those two tables. Okay, now again, like I said, it is useful to know certain cube roots, but if you do know the cubes, then you would automatically know the cube roots as well. So the ones that I would recommend making sure that you do know is uh, 1 cubed is 1, obviously, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, and 10 cubed is 1000. Those are kind of the ones that you would be most likely to need to know that are going to be used the most often. You can use your calculator for the other ones, and um, that's fine, but it does help if you know as many of these as possible, really, but that you can then just use whenever you need to without having to take out your calculator to work it out. Okay, now we're going to go on to an example where we are now going to work out the cube root of a decimal fraction. Okay, so in this case, I've got the cube root of 0, 0.729. Okay, so first of all, just like we were doing when we were cubing, we have to look at the number of decimal places that I'm starting with. So over here, I'm starting with three decimal places, but now we're working backwards. Okay, so we're when we were cubing, we said, I'm multiplying the same thing together three times. So that means that I need to have, um, if I have one decimal place that I'm starting with, I'm going to have three all together. So I'm going to have three in my answer. Here, I'm starting with three in my answer. And I have to say, well, how many did each of those three things? Because I'm cube rooting. So I multiplied three things together to start off with. How many decimal places did they each have to have? in order for me to end up with three decimal places. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the number of decimal places by whatever our root is. So if it's a cube root, I'm going to divide with the number of decimal places by three to know how many decimal places the cube root should have. Okay, so in this case, there are three decimal places. So I should have started, my cube root should have one decimal place. That's by dividing that by three, I get one decimal place. Okay, so then I need to go and work out what is the cube root of 729, and the cube root of 729 is 9. So I need to have a 9, and it needs to have one decimal place. So 9 is only one digit, so it is going to be my only decimal place. And then I have my comma over here and 0. It's positive because my number inside my root sign over here is positive, so that means that I had to start with a positive cube root in order to, when I cube it, to get a positive number over there inside my root sign. So for that one, you should get 0 0.9. So first of all, you look and see what sign is it. If it's negative inside here, then you have to have a negative cube root. If you 
have decimal places you have to work out how many decimal places you should have after you work after you find the cube root and then uh, make sure that once you cube root the actual number part of it then uh, your answer needs to have the right number of decimal places okay so that's how you're going to work out the cube root of a decimal fraction so now I'm going to give you three that you're going to work on yourself and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on it Okay, you should hopefully be done with that. So let's go through each of those examples. So for question A, we started with 0 0.000008. So first of all, we need to identify how many decimal places are we starting with over here. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places that I'm starting with. Okay, now when I cube root this, I need to know how many decimal places did my original number have to have when I cubed it in order to end up with six decimal places over here. Okay, so first, if I've got six decimal places, then what I need to do is I need to work out, and I cubed it, then I need to work out how many decimal places I had to have in three identical things that were, be, that were being multiplied together. So because there had to be three identical, th identical things, I am going to divide my decimal places into three parts. So I've got, if there are six decimal places, I'm going to divide six by three. So my cube root should have two decimal places. So I know that I'm going to end up with two decimal places in my answer over here. Then if I cube root the eight, what I'm going to get is two. Now two only has one digit. So I need to still have another decimal place because I need to have two decimal places all together. So at the moment I've got one, I'm going to fill in the extra spot with a zero, and then I'm going to put in my zero comma over there. So uh, the cube root of 0 0.000008 is 0 0.02. Now it was positive because the number that I started with inside the, the root sign over here was positive as well. Okay, next I have got the cube root of negative 1.331. Okay, so first, I'm starting with a negative number, which means that I know I need to end up with a negative number as well. So when I cube root 1, 331, I need to see how many decimal places I have. In this case, I have got 1, 2, 3 decimal places. So when I cube root this number, I should have one third of that number of decimal places because I had to start off with... Um, three separate things that all had the same number of decimal places. So I'm going to divide the number of decimal places, which in this case is three, 
by 3 and that gives me 1. So I must have one decimal place in my answer. And then when I cube root, if I ignore the comma, I just have 1331. I'm going to cube root 1331 and that gives me 11. So now I'm going to have 11, but I need to make sure that I have one decimal place. So my comma is going to go over here between the two ones, making it 1 comma 1. And then question C, I had negative 0.027. Again, my answer is going to be negative because if I'm starting with a negative that I'm cube rooting, I have to have a negative cube root. Okay, and then when I have, in this case, again, three decimal places, I need to make sure that I divide those that number of decimal places by three to know how many decimal places my cube root must have. So if I divide that by three, I get three. So my, my cube root... Or I get one, sorry, so my cube root must have one decimal place. So now I'm going to go and cube root to the 27. If I cube root 27, I get 3, so I need to have 3. And it needs to be in a number that has one decimal place. So that is my only decimal place. So I'm just going to put in my 0, comma over there. And that is what you should have got for the cube root of negative 0.027. Okay, so that is question C. Now we're going to go on to cube roots of common fractions. Okay, so in this example, we have got the cube root of negative 1 over 216. Okay, so first of all, just like we had with our decimal fractions, the first thing I'm going to look at is my sign, as I'm going to see, well, this is negative, so that means I had to have a negative cube root. Uh, I had to have started off with a negative number that I was cubing in order to get that. Okay, so I'm going to have negative over there. And just like what we were doing when we were cubing a fraction, we had to do the numerator and the denominator. We're going to do the same thing when we are cube rooting. So the cube root of 1 is just 1. And the cube root of 216 is 6. Okay, so that's what you should get for the cube root of negative 1 over 216. Now, when you are working, again, with fractions, make sure that you don't have any mixed numbers. If you do have mixed numbers, you need to first combine it and make it into an improper fraction so you have a numerator and denominator and no extra numbers in front of it. And then you can go and work out your cube root. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few to work on yourself now. And again, I'm going to give you uh, two minutes to work on this. Okay, you should be done with those questions, so let's go through each of those examples. So in question A, we had the cube root of 512 
over 2,197. So first of all, 512, our numerator, if we cube root that, you should have got 8. Over, if we cube root 2,197, you should get 13. Okay, now like I said, this isn't one of the ones that you necessarily need to really know. So at the moment you could use the table or you can just use your calculator if you need to. So the cube root of 2197 and that gives you 13. Okay, so you can use the calculator for these if you need to. Right, then question B, we had the cube root of negative 64 over 125. Again, that gives us a negative answer because we, when we cube a negative number, we end up with a negative answer. So if we're cube rooting a negative number, we had to have started with a negative number first. Okay, so now if I cube root the 64, that gives me 4. And then if I cube root 125, that gives me 5. So the cube root of negative 64 over 125 is negative 4 over 5. And then the last one, we have negative 23 and 111 over 343. So the first thing we need to do is convert this to an improper fraction. So I'm going to say 23 times 343. That gives me 7,889. And then I add the 111. And that gives me 8,000. So my numerator, when I convert this to an improper fraction, improper fraction, my numerator is 8,000. So this is going to be the cube root of negative 8,000 over 343. Okay, so now I'm starting with a negative number. So when I cube root it, I get a negative answer. The cube root of 8,000 is 20 over the cube root of 343 is 7. So that's what you should get for question C. Okay. Now we're going to go on to an example where we've got subtraction inside our root sign. So we've got the cube root of 35 minus 8. Okay, now just like we were doing when we were working out with uh, brackets earlier, when we were working with cubes, when you have a cube root, you have to work out what's inside there first, if it's addition or subtraction, because a root sign acts as brackets. It, it means the same thing as if you had brackets. In fact, if you were going to type this into your calculator, what you would need to do is, because you can't write the root sign over the whole thing on a calculator of this kind. If you have a Casio, then you can, but if you have this kind of calculator, what you actually need to do is type in your root sign and then you have to put brackets in to show that this stuff is inside, is all inside that root sign. So the, the root sign acts like brackets. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to simplify what is inside that root sign. And we have 35 minus 8 and that gives us 27. So this is the cube root of 27, which we can then simplify to give us 3. Okay, so when you've got a calculation inside your root sign like this, like additional subtraction, then you have to simplify that first before you actually apply the root. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few to do for yourself. And again, I'm giving you three minutes for this one or for these examples to work on.
Okay, you should be done with those questions by now, so let's go through each of those examples. So for question A, we had the cube root of 100 minus 225. So first of all, I have to simplify that 100 minus 225. That gives me the cube root of negative 125. Now, when I cube root a negative number, we said that we're going to get a negative answer. So that's going to be negative. And then the cube root of 125 is 5. So for that example, you should have got negative 5. Question B, we're going to simplify 343 plus 386, and that should have given you 729. So this is the cube root of 7 to 9, which if you simplify the cube root of 729, that gives you an answer of 9. It's positive, so it's going to stay positive. And then the last one, we have the cube root of 8,000 minus 9,000, which gives us negative 1,000. If we simplify that, we're going to get negative, because when you cube root a negative number, you get a negative answer. And the cube root of 1,000 is 10, so that's negative 10. So for question C, you should have got negative 10. Right, now let's go on quickly just to talk about negative numbers. Unlike when we're working with squares, when you're working with cubes, you can have negatives, okay? So when we're squaring a number, any, if you, whether you squared a positive or a negative, you always got a positive answer because you are multiplying um, an even number of items by themselves. So if, even if they started off as negative, when you multiply them together, you ended up with a positive answer. But here, with cubes, we are multiplying an odd number of items together. So if I am multiplying negatives together, I'm going to get a negative answer. If I'm multiplying positives together, I will get a positive answer. So like, for example, if I have 4 cubed, it gives me 64. But if I have negative 4 cubed, I get negative 64. So when I'm working with cubes, I can get a negative answer. So we've already dealt with this. When we we're working out cube roots, if you're starting with a negative number inside your root sign, you're going to end up with a negative answer. It's not the same as when we had squares or square roots. When we had a square root of a negative number, then it was imaginary. But that's not the case with cubes. When we're working with cube roots, we can get the, the cube root of a negative number, as we have been doing in so many of our, of our examples over here. When you have a cube root of a negative number, then it will also be negative. Okay. Now we are going to go on to some examples where we're going to be working with mixed operations. Okay, so now just to remind you, when you're working with mixed operations, there is an order in which you need to do your calculations. You can't just do your calculation in whatever order you want. You have to follow a specific order. Okay, so just to remind you, we've got bed mass. Like this. Okay, so B is for brackets. E is for exponents. Now, this is the first time we are really doing the exponents part of this. Okay, because exponents is where we're working with our our squares and our cubes, square roots, cube roots, those are all fall under the exponents um, umbrella. Then we have got division and multiplication. And then we have addition and subtraction. Okay, so that is the order that we need to do our calculations. Now remember I said that a root sign acts as a set of brackets. So anything that's inside a root sign needs to be done at the same time as things that are in brackets. Okay, right. And then we're going to apply the actual root as well or the exponents that may be outside the brackets. And then we have our, addition and, our division and multiplication, then addition and subtraction. Remember, if we have got more than one thing that's happening inside the brackets, we have to apply bed mass inside the brackets as well. Okay, so let's start off with a simple example. In this example, we have got 2 root 9. Now remember, if I have nothing in between, it means multiplication. So this is 2 multiplied by the square root of 9 plus 3 
root 4. This is the same as 3 multiplied by the square root of 4. Okay, so first of all, according to bed mass, I have to do anything that's inside the brackets first. There's nothing inside any brackets here that I need to actually calculate. There's no additional subtraction or anything like that inside my brackets, which don't exist, or inside any root signs. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that step. My next step is exponents. Now remember, exponents is also includes roots. Okay, so exponents and roots are this next step over here. So here I've got 9 and 4, which are both inside square root signs. So my next step is going to be to simplify those square root signs. So I've got 2 multiplied by the square root of 9, which is 3. So this is 2 times 3. Now I can either write a multiplication sign, or I can write a dot, which I'm going to talk to you about um, a little while later, not necessarily in this lesson. But a dot also gets used uh, to show multiplication or I can write the 3 in brackets. I can't just write the 3 next to the 2 because then it's going to look like 23, and it's not 23, so I can't do that. Okay, then I've got plus 3, and then the square root of 4 is 2. So again, the same thing, I can just write it in brackets like that, or I can write times 2, or I can write a dot and then 2. Okay, now I'm going to simplify these. So I've got 2 times 3, because division and multiplication go next, so now I'm on my multiplication step. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 times 2 is also 6, and that, I can now go on to my addition and subtraction, that gives me 12. So that's what you should get for that example over there. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. We're going to be doing them one at a time, and for each question I'm going to give you two minutes to work on it. So for the first question, you've got two minutes. Okay, you should be done with that example, so let's go through question A. We had 3 multiplied by negative 5 squared plus 4 times 3 cubed. So first of all, there's nothing to do inside the brackets, so I'm going to go straight on to my next step, which is my exponents, the E in bed mass. Okay, so I've got 3 times negative 5 squared is positive 25, because remember when we, when we square a negative number, it's a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So that's positive 25. Plus 4 times 3 cubed is 27. Now again, remember, if I have nothing written in between here, it means multiplication. But once I've simplified this, 
I can't just drop those brackets completely because then it's going to look like I'm writing 325 and that's not going to work. So I need to make sure that I am showing that it is still multiplication, 3 times 25 and over here 4 times 27, not 427. Okay, now I'm going to go and simplify that. So 3 times 25 is 75 plus 4 times 27 is 108. Now over here you can use your calculator. If you don't know what 4 times 27 is, you can work out using the calculator 108. But make sure that you are showing all of your calculations. So you can use your calculator for the in-between little steps, but you have to still show all of the steps over here. Okay, so I've got then 75 plus 108, that gives me 183. So for question A, you should have got 183. Okay, question B. Again, I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this. Okay, so let's go through question B. We had 5 multiplied by the square root of 36 minus 3 times negative 3 squared. Okay, so first of all, bed mass says that I need to do the root and the square over here first because there's nothing else to do inside the brackets. So I can go straight on to simplifying the exponents. Okay, so I've got 5 multiplied by the square root of 36 is 6, so it's 5 times 6 minus, and then here I've got negative 3 squared. Now when we square a negative number, we get a positive answer, so it's going to be positive 9. Now I can write that positive 9 in brackets if I want to, or I can just write the 9 because there's nothing else that I have to worry about that is being multiplied by or anything. If it was negative, then I would want to have brackets saying it's negative and then the negative number. But because it's not negative, I don't need to worry about doing that. So I can just write 9 if I want to. But if you put it in brackets, that's fine too. Okay, now we're going to go and get rid of our brackets by doing our multiplication. So I've got 5 times 6 is 30 minus 9. And that gives me a final answer of 21. So for question B, you should have got 21. Now I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on question C.
Okay, so let's go through question C. You had 4 multiplied by the square root of 25 minus 2 times the cube root of negative 27. So first of all, the square root of 25 is 5. So I have 4 times 5 minus 2 times the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Okay, so now 4 times 5 is 20 minus 2 times negative 3. I've got a negative times a negative. That gives me a positive. 2 times 3 is 6. So then I have 20 plus 6, which is 26. So that's what you should have got for question C. Okay, now we're going to go on to a couple of examples where we've got things to do inside our brackets or our root signs, also known as a radical. So a root sign, like over here, we've got 5, and then inside the square root, I've got 25 minus 9. This sign can also be called a radical. Okay, so inside there, I've got 25 minus 9, then I've got plus 6, and then my brackets, I've got 5, minus 7 cubed. Okay, so now Bedmas says I have to do anything that's inside brackets first. And now, as I said, our root sign or our radical acts the same as a set of brackets. So I have to do what's inside there first, okay, as well. So I've got 5, and then the square root of 25 minus 9, that gives me 16. Plus 6, and then 5 minus 7 is negative 2 cubed. Now that I've simplified that, I can go and I can work out my root and my exponent. So I can say 5 times the square root of 16 is 4, plus 6 times negative 2 cubed is negative 8. And now I'm going to go and do my multiplication. So I have 5 times 4 is 20, and then positive 6 times negative 8 is minus, 6 times 8 is 48. And so finally, I can work out 20 minus 48. I have a positive and a negative, so I'm going to subtract their absolute values and keep the sign of the one that has the higher absolute value, which is the 48. So that's going to be negative, and 48 minus 20 is 28. So it's negative 28. So that's what you should get for that example. Okay, so remember, when you've got things inside your radical or your root sign and things inside your bracket, that has to be simplified first. If it's addition and subtraction, it has to be simplified first. Okay, so now you're going to have a few that you're going to work on for yourselves. Again, I'm going to give you two minutes to work on each of these. Okay, so for the first one, you have two minutes to work on question A. Okay, you should be done with that. So let's go through question A. We had 4 squared 
multiplied by 2 squared minus 3 squared in brackets all squared. Okay, so first of all, bed mass says I have to do anything that's inside the brackets first. And we said that if there is multiple things that need, to, that need to happen inside the brackets, I need to make sure that I apply bed mass in there as well. So inside the brackets, I've got exponents that I need to simplify before I can get onto my subtraction. So I'm going to have 4 squared. I'm not going to touch that yet because I'm nowhere near that stage yet. So I'm going to go inside my brackets. 2 squared is 4 minus 3 squared is 9 because exponents... My squares over there are exponents. Exponents come before subtraction. Okay, then I'm going to close the bracket and that needs to be squared. Now I need to do my subtraction inside my bracket before I can get to my exponent outside the bracket. So I've got 4 squared and then over here I have got 4 minus 9 is negative 5 squared. So now I've got something squared times another thing squared. So now I can go on to my brackets. And I, I can go on to my exponents and I can say, what is 4 squared? 4 squared is 16. And what is negative 5 squared? That is positive 25. So now I have 16 times 25. So I can say 16 times 25 and that gives me 400. Okay, now again, like I said, you can use the calculator for in between steps like this, so long as you are showing all of your steps that you are following. Okay. So you're not just using the calculator to type that whole thing in the beginning and writing down the answer. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, question B. Again, I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this one. Okay, you should be done with that example. So let's go through question B. So for question B, we had the cube root of negative 8 multiplied by, in brackets, the square root of 9 minus the square root of 25, and then that whole bracket is squared. Okay, so first of all, I need to simplify what's inside those brackets over there. So this is going to stay as it is for now. So I've got the cube root of negative 8, and then inside the brackets, I have the square root of 9, which is th uh, 3, minus the square root of 25, which is 5 squared. Okay, so now I can go and I can simplify what's inside those brackets, and that gives me negative 2 squared. So now I'm going to do my root and my exponent, because remember, they can be done in the same step, just like multiplication and division can be done in the same step. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2 multiplied by the square of negative 2, which is positive 4. And that gives us a final answer 
of negative 8. If I multiply negative 2 by 4, that gives me negative 8. Okay, then the last one is question C. And again, I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this example. Okay, you should be done with that last example. So let's go through question C. So we have got 5 multiplied by 6 minus 9 in brackets squared, minus 2 multiplied by the cube root of 1 minus 9. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to simplify inside the brackets. I've got 6 minus 9, and inside the root sign over here, I've got 1 minus 9. So I need to simplify those first. So I've got 5 times 6 minus 9 is negative 3 squared, minus 2 times the cube root of negative 1, oh, 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Okay, so now I can go and I can simplify my exponent and I can simplify my root over there. So I've got 5 times negative 3 squared is positive 9 minus 2 times 3, or the cube root, sorry, of negative 8 is positive or negative 2. So 5 times 9 is 45, and then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So it's 45 plus 4, which gives me 49. So that's what you should have got for question C. Okay, so that is working with cubes and cube roots. Also, in these last few examples, we were bringing in squares and square roots as well. We were working with our mixed operations. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.